Hey there, welcome to The Uplift, the show that's got just what you need, including these stories. A woman who got a second chance at life and is now using it to help others. The flag manufacturer in Texas that's now selling these flags more than their state flag. A teen using basketball to help his best friend. Plus how seniors are cycling around the world and making friends on the road. And how the gift of song is helping one mom with Alzheimer's. All that, plus our most heartwarming videos of the week. You're watching The Uplift. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopel. Welcome to The Uplift. We do indeed have a great show for you, and we are going to start with something a little bit different this week. Our three most heartwarming videos of the week right off the top, starting with this viral moment. It is, of course, fun to grow up with a sibling because you've got a built-in best friend. But two-year-old Nora got a little bit more in the form of Big Brother Weston. Take a look. That is six-year-old Weston acting as a kind of stepping stool, a staircase, if you will, for Nora as she gets down from the trampoline. Weston's little moment of kindness there went viral with many people just shocked at how kind he was to his little sister. To our next story, getting that college acceptance letter is exciting for anyone. Doesn't matter who you are, even an Olympic gold medalist. Olympic gymnast Lori Hernandez, who competed in Rio in 2016, opened her acceptance email with a friend nearby. This is their reaction. Hey, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna be. No matter what happens, I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you. You go! <laughs> Here we go. Lori was accepted <laughs> to NYU's Tisch School of the Arts, and it seems like even her camera there did a little bit of a backflip out of excitement. All right, how about one more for you? At the Oscars last week, the Academy honored Betty White in a very appropriate way. Jamie Lee Curtis took the stage with an adorable puppy named Mac and Cheese, uh, and she's urging people to adopt pets from a nonprofit called Paw Works. Why? Well, because Betty White was, of course, an animal activist who has inspired donations to shelters since she died at, nine, at 99 last year. Well, here's the twist. After the tribute, Curtis said she left the Dolby Theater and she got a text message from a friend. And it was a photo of her old pal John Travolta holding mac and cheese, that very same dog, in the green room at the Oscars. Not only was her former co-star playing with the puppy, he actually felt compelled to adopt her. Travolta said his son Ben adopted mac and cheese and Curtis said it was an emotional end and a perfect tribute to Betty White. I should say, I don't know if that dog is a him or a her. Mac and cheese is kind of gender neutral. It's delicious though and that's a very sweet pup and a lucky one. Find some more heartwarming stories and viral videos at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash uplift news. Now on to another actor, Orlando Bloom. He traveled to Moldova to meet refugees fleeing Ukraine recently. Bloom is a UNICEF goodwill ambassador, and he took a two-day trip and visited the UNICEF-supported Blue Dot Spaces. This is where women and children stop for rest and get support as they cross the border from Ukraine to safety elsewhere. Bloom shared photos of the mothers and the children he met and urged others to help with the situation there as well. The blue dot stops provide information and protection to traveling families who have left that war-torn country. You may expect a flag manufacturer in the great state of Texas to sell mostly, well, Texas state flags. But Simon's Flag started making a new type of flag last month, and now they're not just snapping in the wind, they are flying off the shelves. Brooke Rogers of our CBS Dallas station shows us why. Until last month, Simon's flags and poles in Irving had never made a Ukrainian flag. But as the news overseas worsened, they had a hunch they'd need them. Well, I got with our production manager, told her we probably should start making a couple flags. They never expected how high the demand would be. Next thing you know, they're just going off the shelves. We are selling more Ukraine flags at this moment than Texas flags. Among the influx of orders. We, we go through these a day. 
one box a day. Came requests from local car dealerships who began displaying Simon's largest flags on North Texas highways. And customers like Arlington's Bruce Maxwell, who purchased a Ukrainian flag to show support for its sister city in Germany and its Ukrainian refugees. We thought this would be a great way to help and alleviate some of the burdens of them and let them know that Americans are thinking about them and praying for them. And as they continue to churn out orders, the baby blues and yellows that dot North Texas's landscape give Farrell a sense of pride, and not just for where she works. I get goosebumps and my heart starts pounding a little bit and it puts a big old smile on my face. Makes me be happy to be an American, that's for sure. Simon's Flags and Poles is donating all of the proceeds from the flags to Ukrainian humanitarian efforts. They also plan to start accepting donations to send to Ukraine in the next week or so. Well done, Simon's Flags, and I'm glad you added polls as well. That's very handy. We appreciate it. When we come back, the heart transplant recipient who got a second chance at life and has dedicated that life to bringing joy to others. Plus how one organization helps seniors feel the wind in their face and joy in their hearts once again. Look at that. How can you not smile looking at those pictures? And a mom who has a special gift and is still using that gift to spread joy at 91 years old. Ideally, getting older does not mean giving up the things that you do for fun. And so one global organization is making sure of that. Caitlin O'Kane shows us now how cycling without age, that's the name of it, is helping seniors go for bike rides and form connections out on the road. In Santa Barbara and Scotland, in fact, all over the world, one-time strangers are becoming friends by going on bike rides together. They get paired up by Cycling Without Age, an organization that helps seniors go for bike rides even if they can't pedal themselves. 74-year-old Hugh and his 56-year-old pilot, David, have been riding together for years. Well, it gives me a connection uh, with people from an older generation. Unfortunately, I've lost both my parents. They're no longer uh, with us. And for me, it gives me just that connection with older people and I enjoy uh, spending time with them and hearing their stories. They go for rides about once a week, often discussing the history of their neighborhood in Scotland, where they both lived all their lives. Pilots and passengers often form friendships outside of cycling. We also go to the gym together uh, one day a week, <laughs> um, where I, I help you do some exercises. He's not able to do on his own, although he, he does very well. Um, Jim, Hugh goes to the gym five times a week, Hugh? Every day of the week, Every yeah. They can also connect with other people on the road. For John Siegel Baitner, who founded the Santa Barbara chapter of Cycling Without Age, it's actually a rule. A lot of people that, are, that we ride with don't have any spoken language anymore. That's been taken away from them by, by time. Um, but uh, they say, what does it cost? If, like, if I'm gonna go for a ride, what's it gonna cost? I said, there's what it costs. It costs, you have to wave. If you don't wave, I'm gonna kick you out. John says he likes red lights because it provides an opportunity to connect. Some interactions from the road stick with him for years later. There's this big monster truck up at the intersection. I saw Eleanor and, and Dorothy starting to rock and roll with his music. When they, he rolled down his window and then they went, turn it up. <laughs> and he turned it up even louder. And I think he's still smiling and this is like three years ago. That happens all the time. For seniors like Hugh, who used to cycle with his friends all over the world, it's a chance to feel the wind in your face again and cycling can be just as impactful for the pilots. When you take a 101-year-old woman for a bike ride, then she holds your hand tight and says thank you and gives you a kiss on the cheek. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. If there's anything that can top riding a bike on a nice day, it's having someone there along for the ride. I love that shot there. They're going through their sprinklers. That's wonderful. You never forget how to ride a bike. You also never forget the feeling.
a great organization there. All right, we're now going to introduce you to the two best friends who bonded over sports, and now one of these two teens is using basketball to help the other after he suffered a serious injury. Mark Strassman has that story. As sixth graders, Jordan Sloan and Marcus San Miguel found a gem in the gym, their friendship. He was the guy I talked to about most anything I had on my mind. Good friend, best friend? Best friend. Both standout athletes. But 18 months ago, a life changer. Sloan, number 20, took a hit to the head playing football. Brainstem trauma. Could he move arms, legs? Nothing. Jordan's mother, Jasmine Jamison. The rest of his brain is perfectly fine. His balance and coordination um, has been thrown completely off. Grab on, that's cool. Jordan's rehab is six days a week. Good. The 16-year-old's nice. willing himself to play sports again. Lift, lift, lift. It was very hard to see my best friend like that. Marcus started a pledge drive for his friend's family. Supporters donate every time he takes a charge on the basketball court. I really just wanted to do whatever I could to help. If the situation had been reversed, he would have done something similar for me. He's raised more than $13,000 so far. I don't know that I will ever be able to really <laughs> thank him. I will try for the rest of my life. Friends for life. Now that's a game changer. It's a nice piece there from uh, Mark Strassman. We wish them the best in recovery. History was made in Los Angeles at the fire department when Kristen Crowley was sworn in as fire chief. Crowley is the agency's first female chief. She was also making history as its first LGBTQ leader. Crowley is a 22-year veteran and was sworn in by Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. We got work to do, and we're okay with that. We're going to bring everybody along in this journey, and that's what's so incredible about it. Here I am. This is who I represent, and I cannot wait to start the work. Wow. Crowley has risen through the ranks as firefighter, captain, deputy chief, and she made history before back in 2016 when she became the first female fire marshal in Los Angeles. We wish her the best. And when we come back, the teen who opened a dress store inside her school and why everything in that store is free. And the woman who won a community service award and used the prize money to buy sleeping bags for the homeless. And that's not all she's done. Also, we'll introduce you to Norma Griner, a mom with Alzheimer's, whose singing is a gift to her family and beyond. Stick around. It's pretty common for high schoolers to look forward to getting all dressed up in gowns for prom at the end of the year, but Hannah Schmidt is not only focused on making her own prom night fun, she also wants to make sure her classmates have everything they need to make it a good night. CBS Boston's Rachel Holt has more. Like many high schoolers, Hannah Schmidt can't wait for prom. I'm really excited to go. I just asked one of my friends to go. As she started shopping for the May dance, the North Attleboro High School junior thought about her classmates, specifically those who might have trouble affording a dress. No one should have to go out and spend like $400 to $600 on a dress and we're only going to wear them one time, so why not donate them? She put the wheels in motion to open a dress shop at the school. She asked for some space. Um, she reached out to people she knew, created a plan for communication, and uh, we found our SRO gave her, kind of let us use her office. It's called Sparkle, a fitting name when you see some of the options. I want this one. <laughs> this is really nice. Anyone is able to donate dresses and students can make a private appointment to pick out the perfect gown at no cost. One of them was so, so, so excited, sent me pictures in it right afterwards. And the other was just excited, just as excited too. Two months away from prom, so far over 80 dresses have been collected in all different colors and sizes. And I was scared I was only going to get a certain size range, but I actually have size 0 to 20, which makes me really excited. The end of the senior year and the junior year is always a special uh, experience for all of our kids, but this year is most, um, you know, most important because of all the bit that they've been through. I get 
emails every day about people wanting to donate is crazy. Like, it reminds you how, like, there still is good people in the world. Oh, and that's one of them. That's a great story. All right, when Deborah Orler received a heart transplant, she also got a second chance at life itself. And so she knows what it feels to be hopeless. Transplant patients also have a long wait. But now she also knows what it's like to be hopeful, and she's helping others become hopeful as well. CBS San Francisco's Sharon Chin has the story. Hey, Mom, are you ready? Find the homeless, bring them joy. Would you like a sandwich? It's part of Deborah Orler's weekend routine for the last 12 years. On this day, she's handing out donated donuts and sandwiches in San Francisco's Tenderloin. I could be that person out there on the streets. I know right where they're at. After a heart transplant in 2019 for a congenital heart condition and recovery from decades of addiction, Deborah knows every day is precious. You could use more. So she spends her days serving people in need, from the homeless to senior citizens and veterans. Life is not hopeless. No matter how dark or bleak things seem, you know, there's a way out, and, and I'm proof. Deborah leads a church program that gives away personal hygiene products. Volunteers from community groups assemble the donation bags that she hands out for free. Deborah also brings clothes and about 100 meals weekly to homeless encampments along the peninsula. And then we have some pasta. Inspiring volunteer cooks like Ramia J. If she can go that far to, you know, identify the people to be in the places and to offer them food. Thank you. Then I should be able to do something from my side as well. This one, like we're walking out. In Redwood City, Deborah's route takes her under the freeway and through the train and bus stops. Oh, look at you. You knew I was coming, so you dressed up. To homeless folks. Folks like Richard, who didn't want to use his last name. She really not only brings the stuff for us and for our pets, but also she's very kind and she become a friend to us. I become their friend. No, no, no. I become the light that shines for them every week to bring love and joy. Deborah almost lost that light when complications from her heart surgery left her on life support two years ago. She's in heart failure now, but keeps on giving. When she received a $15,000 community service award, she used it all to buy 450 sleeping bags for the homeless. I just need to do this. If it's the last thing I do on this earth, I need to go out and change lives. Thank you. Have a nice day, Henry. See you yeah. next Sunday. She's got a lot of heart, that's for sure. It's a beautiful story. Uh, good luck with that mission. Coming up, the 91-year-old with Alzheimer's who is still using her talents to bring joy to her family and to her community. One-year-old Norma Griner has Alzheimer's and needs round-the-clock care, but she also has a gift, singing. CBS Baltimore's Paul Gessler introduces us to Norma and her son, who show us how music can make life a little bit easier. The rhythm inside the Griner house in North Baltimore is a bit slower these days. Oh, these birds out here really have a good time. Norma is 91. And she watches for birds from her perch in the kitchen. Uh, they'll be back. And often nods off. She goes back and forth. She goes back and forth. Larry and is Norma's son. I'm home. I'm in a home I grew up in. And for the past four years, Ma. her full-time roommate. Mom, mom. It makes sense why Larry keeps calling his mom, Ma. mom. She knows my name because I'm here. Does she recognize that I'm her son? No. Norma has dementia, diagnosed, Larry and his siblings say, at least 11 years ago. Uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. When it actually started, we're not 100% sure. Norma lived independently for years. Go on. Gertrude will take you from here. But now relies on round-the-clock care from Larry and nurse Gertrude. The disease is, you don't know what it's going to do. It affects everybody differently. Alzheimer's attacks memory. I don't know. It's relentless and gets worse with time. It was just a conversation with a stranger. Um, but it's seeing that on a regular basis. It's, it's knowing that it won't get better, which is the hardest. You ready? Larry embraces what's left of his mom's memory, and Norma awakens. Remember that song? Can you sing it? Can she sing? 
more like perform. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why the why can't I? Hey, you, can, you ain't got no wings, that's why. Oh yeah, she'll go and go and go and go. She'll go here at the kitchen table. Elizabeth give you that. And she'll go. Well, I guess I'm going, so bye. Anywhere. All right, Mom, you ready? Mostly, she takes her voice on the road to Lake That's Roland. The one bird I don't miss. Larry picks a picnic table. She just enjoys the presence of other people. To share his mom with newfound friends who await a performance. It's a remarkable transformation. You are so beautiful. Transformation is not a strong enough word for Norma's gift. To me. Absolutely incredible. Uh, she sings perfect pitch in harmony. You are so beautiful. It's the pathway to her mind. To be. It's the pathway back to my mom. His mom performed in the Baltimore Symphony Chorus for 24 years. Larry never sang with her until her diagnosis. I don't know most of the lyrics. I Google them. Here we go, Mom. Give it to him. Give it to him. She lights up. She lights up the world and everybody around her. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You almost never see Larry without his phone, recording his mom's performances for her many Facebook friends. The videos Larry's found are therapy more for other caregivers him included. When we drive out of this park, she won't remember any of this. I understand that, but it's nice that I have the videos. What Larry does with her is as remarkable as her singing. The patience and love and care that he shows is as touching as any part of this story. It's my pleasure. I want my mom to live. You know, I, I just wake up every morning, but Enjoy a moment. Come on, Mom. Thursday's moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Larry and his brother Howard take Mom to the Meyerhoff. Oh, you brothers. We are. And your mother. There's levity to being a stranger. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm a mother. To a mom like Norma. This will be the life of the party when she walks in. This day, the party is for her. A private rehearsal doesn't stop Norma from conducting in her chair. Row Q, seat 115. The woman's a ham. <laughs> when the music stops, Alto One, Norma E. Griner. A musician and historian shows Norma a program from 45 years ago. December 1976. Another pathway to Norma's past. What do you remember about that? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I just have to stop and think about it. While she thinks, the brain does not skip a beat on an opera classic. <laughs> She impacts other people. She makes them smile. What else can you ask for? I think that anybody that has this disease has something in them that made them alive. You just got to find that pathway. Yeah, nice. Wow! Wonderful! It was. Wasn't that wonderful? And Norma is. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is wonderful. Uh, music really is a pathway back, uh, and I'm very glad they found it. That is our show for you. I'm confident it brightened your day and lifted you up. And if it didn't, you know what I say. Watch it again. It's free. See you next week.